K-I-L-R Taylor Games Gamers, simmers, and pilots, I am the Killer Gamer, and welcome back to the tour around the world featuring Sublogic Flight Simulator 2 for the Commodore 64. Today is an exciting day. This is going to be an exciting flight because we are now going to be going from one scenery disc to another. It was a big thing when we uh, went from the default uh, Chicago area and then went outside of that to scenery disc number nine. But now we're going into another scenery disc. Did you ever think we would get this far? Let's go ahead and pull up the map. Let's talk about our flight. Okay, so this is the map from where we left off the last time. Uh, we're here at Fort Wayne, Indiana, and we're going to be flying... Um, Oh, I can't draw that way. <laughs> this way. <laughs> We're going in that direction. <laughs> we are coming like this. So we're coming over from one map onto another uh, with scenery disc number 11. Uh, number 11 covers the Detroit area and Lake Huron. So as we fly, uh, we will need to load in the next uh, scenery disc and then continue going. Um, I believe that we should be able to tune into Rosewood uh, once we switch over scenery discs. And then we can tune into Waterville, which, interesting enough, um, I don't think this VOR exists anymore. There's a Toledo VOR. Because uh, when I was checking Navigraph just to get an idea of like how far apart the two scenery maps were, I noticed that there is a VOR for Toledo, but Waterville doesn't seem to be there. But obviously for this, we'll be tuning into Waterville. So let's go ahead and get things uh, started here. we got to turn on the magnetos. and get that helicopter sound going. <laughs> so we're going to be heading at... Oh, I'm not sure. Let's say 060. That'll get us uh, pretty much started. what's really hard is trying to trying to see where we are on the map uh, I'm figuring out what the zoom is So we can see the uh, airport a little bit better. I think that runway that we're actually heading towards, I think, is actually going to work out okay.
Ah! As we go off into the grass here. I get lost. <laughs> we just uh, went out into nowhere. Oh, okay. Yeah, the uh, taxiway is a line, apparently. That's okay. We'll just uh, move our way over here. What am I doing here? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Going all over the place. This was the simulator that got me into flight simulation. It all started right here for me. Commodore 64. Okay, runway 14. And we'll go ahead and go. here. So there goes Fort Wayne behind us. Wave goodbye and farewell and see ya! Indiana as we go into a whole new state. Ohio. We're on our way to Toledo, Ohio.
go. About a rough heading of 070, that should do it. start bringing the uh, throttle down here. We'll start leveling off. There's the airport. And that's Fort Wayne right there. It looks like there's a uh, like a a building or something, a white building right there. Tell you what, it has been one heck of a week. Okay, so Rosewood is 117.5. Let's go ahead and change the nav for that. Interesting. So I am picking up Rosewood, but the scenery disc isn't loaded yet, so that must be off the map uh, on scenery disc 9 to allow you to easily connect between one disc and the other. Sixty-two miles away. Well, it looks like we have to go in a different direction, too. Okay, we need to go at a heading of 132. We might be able to tune in Waterville, so let's see here. Okay. Nothing for Waterville just yet. Head due east. 
or close to due east. We don't have to go directly to the um, to the Vore. map again here so that way you can see so I believe that we're coming in probably from this direction right here because here's Rosewood so my thought is let's just keep going in this general direction um, and then heading of 020 will take us like that direction there. But we should be able to also tune into Waterville at least somewhat soon. Um, well, like 50 miles or so, but <laughs> that's that's what we're looking at. This is where it got kind of uh, interesting and fun, um, going from one scenery disc to another, and when you're like able to tune in the vores from that other one, it's like, oh yes, I'm in the right area. Okay, now did you notice that the DME just went off? I think that means we need to load in the next disk, so let's go ahead and do that. To load in Detroit and Lake Huron, place, press any key to continue. And there we go, yes. We are on now officially on scenery disc number 11. As you can see, we now have a road uh, that we're following. And our VOR is tuned back in at 57.4 miles. Although, okay, no, that, yeah, that's, no, I think we're good. Let's just keep following this road. Ah, and VOR number two has tuned in, <clears throat> so we can actually uh, we can actually change things around here a little bit. We'll, we'll uh, tune into Waterville. That oh, looks like there's an airport up there too. Okay, fifty nine miles, fifty nine miles to Waterville. And Toledo should just be a little bit past that. Heading a zero six eight. I'm going to hazard a guess that that airport there in front of us is Portland Municipal. See water. I think that's Lake Huron up ahead. Do y'all see it right up there?
right. little bit not a lot of bit Sometimes it's going to be really hard to control when it comes to turning. That's why I never care for using a joystick when it was on the Commodore 64 because I couldn't make fine-tuned controls controlling. Whereas on a keyboard, I could. I could use the rudder and just, you know, slightly move myself to the right or to the left if I needed to. Okay, so that uh, airport that we saw earlier, that really small airport, um, I believe was this right here. I don't think it was Lima. It would have been one of these two, because we were coming in uh, from here. So I'm, I'm thinking it was this one that we saw. But now we're heading in this direction. go ahead and look up the altitude for Toledo since we're you know pretty much on IFR 686 Yeah, there's a lot of great stuff on this scenery disc. So there's uh, Toledo, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Columbus. Uh, and then a little bit for further north, it actually goes into Canada just a tad bit. Flight Simulator DE, hi there. Welcome back. Good to see you. Welcome to the very first flight simulator that I flew. This is what got me into flight simulation right here. The Commodore 64. I went from this to the Commodore Amiga and then Flight Simulator 5 on the PC. So the Commodore 64 has a special place on my heart because this is where it all started for me. And uh, in regards to the World Tour series that I have going on on Killer TV, and which you are now a part of because you're here, you're part of the show. This is a continuation of the World Series. It was this simulator right here that started off that whole World Tour idea. Because I wanted to go back to the Commodore 64 and I wanted to relive old memories that I had um, in regards to flying to all these different airports. 
Um, and then that just kind of expanded where I was like, well, why don't I, why don't I match those flights on Flight Simulator 5 and 98? Um, and 2000, FS9, and FSX, because those are the ones that I had. And then I kind of went back and I started filling on all the gaps. And then I went to simulators that uh, I hadn't touched before. <laughs> Uh, and then eventually it turned into uh, getting all the X planes that I hadn't had. So yeah, this 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 one right here is is kind of like what's what started everything. So we are on our way to Toledo, Ohio. We're tuned into the Waterville Vor, uh, which no longer exists, at least according to uh, Navigraph. I'll just double check here. There is a Waterville in Washington and Maine, but not Ohio. So the one thing that I did not have uh, back during the Commodore 64 days was this right here. <laughs> the Commodore or the uh, Navigraph. So we started off over here, Fort Wayne, and we're heading over here to Toledo. However, as far as the Commodore 64 is concerned, we're using this map right here. <clears throat> so we were coming in from off the map in this direction like this. So we had to switch scenery discs. We're now on now on scenery disc number eleven, and we're heading right here. And this little blue line right here, that is Lake Huron there, or is that Lake Erie? I think that's Lake Erie, actually. Huron, I think, is up uh, north of it. Yeah, that's Lake er Erie. Lake Huron is the one that's above it. I don't know my geography. <laughs> Don't, don't let me confuse you. <laughs> yeah. So right here, do you see Toledo? Here's Fort Wayne right here. Here's Toledo. Yeah, so Lake Erie, this is what we're seeing. Um, but the scenery disc also covers this area up here. Um, and there's even airports for Sudbury and Saint or Salt, Saint Marie. Something like that up here. So it it goes it goes up into this area um, and covers this area right here, uh, including Pittsburgh and I think Toronto. I think Toronto is on here too, um, and I think Niagara Falls possibly. Go ahead and switch our fuel. We're about halfway down on uh, the right tank. Now the arrow, I got the arrow pointing to the left tank there. So kind of balance things out. Looks like we're holding steady just above 3,000 feet. 
We're 38 uh, miles away from Waterville. And I would say, let's go ahead and tune in, or uh, let's change VOR number two to a vector of 330 because in that direction would take us to Toledo Express. Ooh, we got a river. We got a river over here to the uh, left. As a matter of fact, Waterville is on this side, Toledo's on the other side of that river. There we go, perfect. So, oh, I can't read that. Mantry? <laughs> Maumee, Maumee, M-A-U-M-E-E. -E. That's the Maumee River over there to the left. See how far out I can uh, zoom here. There we go. See the river? There is. All right. There you go. Do you see? Do you see where we're at here? Just in case you're wondering. <laughs> If we were in the area that I was saying that we are, we are. So, yeah, you can see we're heading to Lake Erie there. Two miles to go here. Now, Toledo, does it have an ATIS? No, it does not. But it does have a fuel box. Pittsburgh has an ATIS, and so does Detroit. Those are the only two um, in this area. And since this is a sub-logic scenery disc, we'll be seeing pretty much the si same thing uh, with Flight Simulator 3. As well as the uh, Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator 2. Oi! 
Arrow, how are you, buddy? This is not quite as retro as Microsoft Flight Simulator 1, but it's along the same lines. We just have more areas to fly. And we are on our way to Toledo. And what you're seeing over there is the Maumee River heading to Lake Erie. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about um, uh, that sim being supported by Microsoft Flight Simulator from day one. For those who are watching this on YouTube after the fact, <laughs> this is being recorded on July 24th. Uh, by the time you're seeing this, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 has already been out. And hopefully, I've already been flying it by that time. <laughs> Old Shark! Hey! Good to see ya. Yeah. Here, check this out. We'll zoom out real quick so you can see. That's the Maumee River. You can see Lake Erie there ahead of us. If I zoom out a little bit more. Whoops. Yeah. You can see the Great Lakes. This was my very first flight simulator. This is what got me into flight simulation. Yeah, it does. Um, this is what started the whole idea between the World Tour series that I've got on YouTube. It started with this right here. Because I wanted to go back to the Commodore 64 and I wanted to relive the memories that I had in regards to flying um, across the United States and in Europe and Hawaii and Japan. So it all started with that. Um, and then I thought, well, you know, why not do the same flight plan with uh, Flight Simulator 5 and 98? And, <laughs> and thus, that is how it all began. And then from there, I started adding more simulators, uh, simulators that I hadn't played before and didn't even know about before. We're heading to Toledo, the Toledo Express Airport. We're about 23 miles from Waterville, a VOR that no longer exists. Um, it, I believe it was replaced by the Toledo VOR. You too, old shark. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, the interesting thing is when we started off the tour, um, I was not even streaming on Twitch. These were all being recorded offline. Uh, and I didn't start streaming until uh, 2020. I had an account for Twitch, but I you know, really wasn't sure about the streaming uh, bits. Uh, but then I decided 
uh, 2020 was going to be a big year for Killer TV, and I decided to get into streaming. I did a little research on it and uh, got into it and decided that instead of... Uh, first, I was just going to just just stream stuff and not sure what, but then I decided, why not stream as I'm recording? So I'm recording the episodes um, just I had just as I had before, uh, but in addition, I'm streaming them on Twitch, giving everyone a chance to be a part um, of these memories uh, as I'm doing them. And also, I think it makes the flights uh, a little bit more interesting. So now you know my thought processes behind the whole thing. <laughs> And for those who are watching this here live on Twitch, you are seeing something uh, that won't be aired for another four months. That is a benefit of uh, following me on Twitch um, as I stream these recordings. Uh, you get to see them raw and uncut to start off with. Uh, but also you get to see them weeks and months ahead of time. So if you're a fan of the series and you're not following me on Twitch, you should be. <laughs> Number one, you get to interact with me uh, and be in the plane with me, which I would love. I would love to be able to interact with you and talk with you. Uh, but yeah, then you get to see these flights uh, early on. Ah, free aircrafts from Orbix for FSX and P3D up to version 3. Well, I'm not worried about P3D for version 3. Those simulators, I gotta say, are probably ones that I will not get. Not really interested in the old versions. Um, I started with uh, version 4 because it was 64-bit. And of course, I have FSX, and I'm sure it works with FS16. And I am still going to be doing flights with those. Now, one simulator that I haven't quite decided on is P3D version 5. With uh, Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator 2020 uh, out. Um, I'm not even seeing if there's a purpose for version 5 anymore. For the next seven days, well, I'll have to, I'll have to add that. So the Landcare 4, the Victa Artura, and the Vans RV4. Got about 14.7 miles to the airport. And you know us, uh, you know, we're flying all the different simulators and, you know, flying different types of aircraft and stuff. So, you know, I love these suggestions that you all come up with. Gives me plenty of stuff to, to work up on. Okay, so Toledo, Ohio is straight up ahead. going to go ahead and make a turn to the right here. We 
know that the Toledo Airport is going to be on the other side of the Maumee River. And it's going to be at a heading of 330 out of Waterville. Which I already have tuned in on VOR number 2. Yep. As far as, well, it's not really a new rig, it's a repaired uh, rig <laughs> for my i7. Yeah, the first time that I got the processor replaced um, and I put a fan on it, it was just a stock fan, but I wanted to do that uh, due to space. Uh, it was running over 60 degrees Celsius idle. Not very good. Um, but I got the original heat sink uh, that I had before, which was a big one, a big tall one, um, with the fan attached to that. Went to post, checked out the BIOS, and the temperature was idling at 39 degrees Celsius, which was uh, very ideal. No, not Cooler Master. It is... Or was it? Yes, it was. <laughs> yep. This right here. The Hyper 212 Evo. Um, it has the ability to put two fans, uh, one on each side, which I had originally, um, but it blocked my memory slot, and that's why I quite didn't uh, like this thing. But I only have one fan on there, and it's just fine. It's it's keeping it cool just with one fan on there. Um, and then the uh, case that I've got uh, has got fans all over the place. So it's got like two huge fans on the top. It's got fans uh, along the back, and there's a big fan on the side. So you know it's got great airflow. There is a gray thing over here, and I think that is the airport right there. So let's get ourselves lined up. Oh, I've done a little research on my i7. It is a fourth generation i7. That is what I have. My motherboard will take fourth and fifth generation, uh, but from the CPUs uh, that I've looked up that are it supported, um, the one that I've got is the fastest. It goes up to four, four gig. And with it being a 40, was it a 4790K? I believe that can be overclocked. Um, which I have not done. I've not done overclocking. Uh, because from what I understand, it shortens the life of your processor by doing that. I guess it depends upon how much you overclock it. My i7 rig did not have a name before, but I have given it the name Killer Beast. And 
it's going to stay in my arsenal. Um, hopefully, uh, down the road, I'll be able to build an i9 machine. Which I am going to call the Demon Slayer. <laughs> it's going to be the Killer Demon Slayer. So I'm planning on getting an i9 for that. Uh, M2 hard drive. This, uh, my rig, my i7 rig has a spot for M2 hard drive, which I was going to get, uh, but it was relatively new at the time, and the, um, the most I could get for a M2 hard drive was 528 gig, um, and I looked up uh, the M2 drive for that, and it was like six or seven hundred dollars because it was an old drive. And I said, nope, <laughs> not very price effective. Um, I wanted to add a two terabyte uh, M2 drive, and I don't think that's the airport, I think that might be a building right there. That could be the airport. Right over right over here to the right. Yes, it is. Because remember I told you the airport was at a heading of 330 out of Waterville? Look at the needle, it's moving. Okay, so that brown stick there in front of us, that's a building. That is a downtown building for... Um, for uh, Toledo, Ohio. Okay, let's get some flaps down. Are you suggesting the Ryzen? What is it? Uh, what's the, what's the one that they've got? AMD. Is it the Ryzen Threadripper, or that one might be a little too expensive? Try to line up the runway here. I don't know when I'm going to be able to build that i9, though, uh, because I am unemployed. Because of the 2020 pandemic, I had a great job uh, before, paid really well, it's gone. Um, and I decided to go into business for myself to be self-employed and you're seeing it this is it this is what I am this is what I've always wanted to do is entertain and be a video maker and at the point of my life um, I'm kind of at the point where, you know, I need to take some risks. And I just got to do it. And so, you know, I'm working really hard and I want to turn this uh into 
to something special because being able to entertain people and bring joy and happiness to people's lives, that means more to me than working for some corporation. You know, a corporation that could care less <laughs> about your livelihood and they'll just, all they care about is money and they'll, they'll let you go in a heartbeat. had that happen too many times and uh, enough is enough. All right. Let's get this down. Let's get it down safely. Come on down there. There we go. Trying to stay on the runway here. <laughs> we are here. There's no taxiways here, so we'll go ahead and park at our usual spot. You all know what the usual spot is, right? It's over in the grass. Right at the intersection of two runways. Which, it looks like it's right there. Boy, that came up quick. Let's move over here a little bit. Now, the fact that the runway looks like it's... <laughs> you see how that kind of slides out from underneath us? That seems to be a feature of the Commodore 64. <laughs> now I think this has got a fuel box. The fuel box is our next uh, parking spot if, if it is there. Um, let's take a look here. Because we do need to get some fuel. Yep, I see it. You see it? It's right over to the left there. So let's head on over there. One of the things I learned back in the day when uh, flying or when taxiing is bring up the throttle just a little bit and then um, idle the throttle because otherwise um, the plane seems to get away from you <laughs> especially when turning so as far as using an AMD and a Intel I started with AMD um, but then I eventually went to an Intel, um, I think due to compatibility reasons. I had better compatibility um, and a better performance with an Intel than I did an AMD. I think this was around the time Pentium 4 came out. But I think AMD was slacking at that time too. Um, but they've gotten much better from what I understand. Oh, there's a building right there. No, 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 no. Break, 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 break. We don't want to, uh, hit that building. Corey! United Airlines. No, I'm just going to stick with the Commodore 64. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, man. Yes, I am. As a matter of fact, I've been uh, repairing my i7 machine. 
just for uh, Flight Sim 2020. I even got a new graphics card for it. Right here. 2070 RTX. 2070 Super. And just so you know, I I actually play all the different uh, flight simulators, going back to Flight Simulator One, uh, which I streamed uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. And I even have the old X planes, um, and I've got plans of doing. Yay! Our tanks are full. All right, here we are. Welcome to Toledo, Ohio, another state. Um, I lost count on how many states we visited. So there hasn't been that much. What is this, the fifth state? <laughs> or, well, no, 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 because that's right. I did more states over in the later simulators because they can go in different areas. So what, we had Illinois, Iowa, Michigan, um... Indiana and Ohio. Yeah, so this is the fifth state. Cool. <laughs> Anyways, I hope uh, you enjoyed this flight and I hope you're enjoying the series. If so, please click that like button. Uh, that helps out the video as well as leaving comments and sharing with uh, your friends and on social media. Helps me out, helps out the channel. <clears throat> and if you are new here, um, consider subscribing. Click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that way you're notified of future flight simulation content, which I have a lot of on this channel. And then if you head over to Twitch and follow me there, you'll get notifications of when I come online and then you can join me um, as I'm recording these episodes. You can be part of the show just like um, the other people that were with us <coughs> here on Twitch. So and I'll give you a shout out also in the uh, description section. So, hey, I hope to see you there. And then if you head over to Instagram, you'll be able to see pictures and photos of projects that I'm working on behind the scenes. Twitter uh, for official new killer news and announcements, uh, retweets of things that I think you might find interesting. Snapchat for silly photos. Um, <laughs> Whenever I do them, I, I <clears throat> don't do them very often, but once in a while, I just have fun with it. So, you know, if you're into the Snapchat thing, uh, I, I have an account there, so you can follow me there. And then, uh, for those of you who would like to support the killer cause and be able to help me grow this channel, there is Patreon. Um, I'm very grateful for anything that you're willing to do. Um, and if you take a look at the different tier levels that are set up there, there are uh, bonuses and rewards just waiting for you. So please go check that out. Um, got tier levels over on uh, Twitch as well um, <clears throat> with uh, different types of things there. So hey, if you want to support me, uh, check, out, uh, check out both areas um, and see what it is that you like. Um, you can subscribe to both. <laughs> uh, I would be doubly grateful. <clears throat> but no pressure or anything. But Truly, honestly, it does help me out. Um, this this is what I like to do. This is what I love to do is being able to entertain you um, and provide um, fun, quality content for you. So um, all the support that I can get really, really helps. Thanks so much. And thanks for joining me. And I will see you on the next leg of our journey. Have a killer, awesome day.